Greetings all, I am Jake S. Weissman. As you know, Tenant has been delayed. There is a really good article in Variety. As you can see, it's an interview with the head of NATO, the National Association of Theater Owners, and he says a bunch of stuff that I absolutely disagree with. So I thought I would read it out loud so you don't have to read it, and then you can comment below and let me know what you think. Maybe you agree with him totally. Maybe you disagree with him. You're like me. I don't know. I don't buy anything that's coming out of this guy's mouth. So you tell me. This was published July 20th, 2020 at 1245 p.m. Pacific Time. Theater owners chief on tenant delay and reopening cinemas during the cough by Brent Lang. Movie theaters have been devastated by the cough since the cough has forced cinemas to close across the country and essentially wiped out summer blockbuster season. Exhibitors had long hoped that the August releases of Christopher Nolan's Tenet and Disney's live-action remake of Mulan would kick off a movie-going revival. However, those plans suffered a major setback on Monday when Warner Brothers said it would push back the debut of Tenet to a later date in 2020. While acknowledging the difficulty of distributing a tentpole film while the cough and infection rates are spiking across the U.S., John Fithian, the head of the National Association of Theater Owners, the exhibition industry's top lobbyist, says he is disappointed by the decision and is urging studios to start releasing upcoming movies as planned. He believes that Hollywood needs to embrace a new normal theaters won't be open in every part of the country or the world until there's a vaccine. He believes that in many communities where the cough cases are declining or have flattened, it's safe to return to cinemas. Fithian notes that theaters have instituted new safety protocols and cleaning procedures, but they can't welcome back guests if there aren't new releases to play. In two interviews with Variety, conducted both before and after Warner Brothers announced it was delaying Tenet, Fithian outlined the challenges facing the theater business and reiterated that he believes it's time to turn marquee lights back on. Warner Brothers announced today that Tenet will move off of its August 12th release date and will debut at some point in 2020. What is your reaction? Distributors should stick with their dates and release their movies because there's no guarantee that more markets will be open later this year. Until there's a vaccine that's widely available, there will not be 100% of the markets open. Because of that, films should be released in markets where it's safe and legal to release them. And that's about 85% of markets in the U.S. and even more globally. They should release their movies and deal with this new normal. Studios may not make the same amount of money that they did before, but if they don't start distributing films, there's going to be a big hole in their balance sheets. This is a $42 billion a year business. Most businesses would take 85% of that instead of zero, which will be what happens if they wait for all of the markets to open up. Has Warner Brothers kept you in the loop as it weighs what to do? Absolutely, Warner Brothers and Disney, Disney is releasing Mulan, have been great partners on sharing data and in calling us to let us know their thinking. At the same time, we've kept them fully informed of what we are seeing. I have tremendous respect for the challenges that they are facing to their own business model. I look at this as a great partnership, but at the same time, I think it's a big mistake to keep delaying these movies. Will the tenant delay have a domino effect and will other theaters move their release date? We don't know that yet. Will this prevent majors from reopening? We don't know that either. Theater owners have complained privately that they feel like the media is rooting for them to fail, while spilling a great deal of ink on the rising popularity of streaming services like Netflix. Do you think media coverage has been fair? I think the coverage has been mixed in its fairness. First of all, Throughout all of this, our biggest concern has been the risk levels associated with going to theaters. We have demonstrated with science and by establishing careful protocols that people can come back to theater safely. However, the media prefers to cover the more alarmist news about risk levels. 
They cite a Texas Medical Association chart that lists movie theaters as being riskier than airlines. That's not based on science. And yet it's getting play all over the place, including in the New York Times and on national broadcast television. And when they cover the California shutdown, they talk about movie theaters closing without acknowledging that 10 movie theaters were open in the entire state. The economic challenges we face are very real. Without additional help from Congress, theater companies and employees will be in a very, very bad position. And that's not unique to movie theaters. There are lots and lots of businesses that are survived this. What kind of federal assistance do movie theaters need? When we started this battle in March and April, everyone anticipated that the closures would cause economic pain, but they thought this would be done by early July. So we went to Congress and lobbied to get loans and liquidity and to get unemployment expanded for our 150,000 furloughed workers. We were successful on the unemployment part and only partially successful in the loan part. That's because the loans were never fully implemented by the Fed and the Treasury. Both Congress and the administration bungled some of those loan programs. Now we're back lobbying for the next round of relief legislation, which Congress will start considering this week. It includes better and additional extended benefits for furloughed employees, and it will hopefully make loans easier to obtain so it can help theaters survive financially. Why did you join with AMC, Regal, and the other chains to sue the state of New Jersey to compel the governor to let Movie theaters throughout the country have spent a great deal of time making sure that the right safety protocols are in place. We have figured out ways to reopen with distancing, enhanced sanitation, and other practices. We've hired epidemiologists to consult with, and we've worked with operational experts. We don't want to reopen early or unsafely. We just want to open at the same time as similarly situated institutions. In New Jersey, churches and synagogues are open, but movie theaters are not. That makes no sense. Churches are more dangerous than movie theaters. People sing, they talk, they hug each other. All activities that can spread the virus. In movie theaters, people are sitting and looking at a screen for two hours. They're wearing masks except for those few moments when they're eating popcorn or sipping coke. So we brought a constitutional claim and we believe we have a good case. We asked for a temporary restraining order and that was not granted, but those are rare. But we should have our case heard in a few days or weeks and we anticipate a good result. In New Jersey or New York or some of the other states where theaters are closed, cough rates are stable or they're going down. Unlike restaurants that source their food locally or bars that get alcohol from certain distributor, we serve movies, and movies are a national and global commodity. If studios aren't releasing them, we can't make money. The cough is an existential threat to the industry. We need to get new movies into theaters, and we need to get them in right now. Movie theaters are open in most places, and if this drags out much longer, we're going to have a problem. We've had four months with no revenues, but we've had fixed costs such as leases and insurance. When you have fixed costs and no revenues, that's a problem. You mentioned restaurants and bars being open, but some public health experts think that having indoor dining and drinking has led to the surge in cases. Isn't that an argument against reopening theaters? People are getting sick in churches as we speak. Dozens of people have been at church functions and gotten sick. We have to confront this issue as a society. How do we approach medium risk activities such as movie going and eating in restaurants? Does society choose to shut everything down until there's a vaccine? And by the way, bars are about as high risk an activity as there can be because people drink too much and they stop wearing masks and social distancing. People in our theaters wear masks and socially distance. Most of us are trying to find balance where we can open up with the right protocols in place to keep our patrons and our employees safe. Will the major chains still be around if they can't reopen until there's a vaccine? They'll still be around. They'll just be under completely different ownership. Many will have to go through bankruptcy. Some will reorganize, others will fold. I have no doubt that on the other side of this, cinemas will be stronger than ever and movie going will come back bigger than it was before. 
But if we don't find a way to reopen, a lot of jobs will be ro lost and a lot of companies will go away. The end. Stop for you guys. I'm not sure how many more of these I'll do. I wanted to get this on YouTube. I wanted to make sure that this was readily available to anyone who wanted to hear it. I'm not sure if I will make this a regular thing where I just read an article and put it up or if this is a one-time thing or what the situation is. Um, again, think this guy's full of shit. He really paints a beautiful picture. That being said, if you're a movie theater lobbyist and there's one way for movie theaters to make money, I guess I would say the same bullshit that this guy is spouting. That being said, just because people are going to church doesn't mean you should be going to movie theaters and I don't see equitable danger across the board as being a good excuse for anything. Um, I do have some sources in the know that have told me that they believe everyone's going to get the cough anyway, so we might as well just open up. Uh, that doesn't sound good to me either, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Please, please comment. I need to know what you guys think. I have many opinions. I will probably be back with this article. I just wanted to get it out so we could all grok it together. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh -huh.